Hey guys, uh, so welcome back to the channel here at Muddy Thumper. So I have, uh, this is the Argo I picked up not that long ago. I bought it off a uh, fella from Search and Rescue. And um, I actually gave it to my father. So he took it out last day with myself. And this was not running properly. She was kind of dying. She wanted full choke in order to start. And she was really being difficult. So I'm going to do a little video. There's two problems with this Argo right now. The first one we're going to tackle here tonight and the second one I'm probably going to tackle tomorrow. It's going to be two separate videos. So uh, this Argo is killing the battery. Battery's always dying if you leave it parked. So that's one problem. And aside from that, the one I'm tackling tonight here is we're going to take off a carburetor. I'm going to show you guys how to take it off on an Argo and how to clean one. So this Argo right here, I believe she might be an 87 model, if I recall, something around there. She has 18 horsepower Kohler. So... We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna strip everything down, we're gonna get this carburetor off, we're gonna inspect it and see what's going on because she is losing power. Okay guys, hopefully this angle is gonna work for you. Um, let's go ahead now, let's take off the breeder box. I'm gonna just figure out the tools on the fly because I don't know what I need here. This arc was kind of cool though, you can see down here, you might be able to see in the background. She actually has a Chevy alternator, so I'm surprised that she's killing the battery. We will check all the wires. We'll make sure that thing is wired up properly. So just these wing nuts gotta come off. And there we are. Little gasket. Put that over. We got a nice little tray for ourselves. <clears throat> it is a chilly night out. Okay, I found a 10 mil, so this seems to be the right size. Here we go. Same tight. <laughs> Just loose. Alright, throw that down there. Perfect. And as you can see, as fast as that, we have the carburetor set up. So your carb might look a little bit different than this. You, you can see right here, this has a different or secondary throttle. This is actually not necessary. Um, the Rovers or Search and Rescue, they actually have an additional throttle that was on. This is your main throttle wire or throttle cable. You can see it just pulls on the linkage. The only thing that happens when you pull your throttle, that opens like that, which opens a flap down in the carburetor. When you let go, if you have the proper spring tension, there's your throttle off, so watch. Throttle on, throttle off. It's pretty simple, eh? So to let this linkage go, it's extremely simple. I'm gonna zoom you guys in just to see a little bit clearer. So I have to let that bolt go, because that's just a pivot arm. I have to let this little uh, Phillips go. And aside from that, I think that's pretty much it. We gotta let our fuel line go right here. Our choke is back here which is just another lever like that, and these two bolts. So I'm gonna go find the sizes for you guys, make it a little bit easier, and I'll come back here in a second. Okay guys, uh, I think I have all the tools I'm gonna need. If I put you guys up here. I have needle nose pliers, channel locks. I have that 10 mil flat top. I believe I have 11 mil and also a half inch. So let's go ahead now, let's crank it all off. So this is a little flat top. Be nice having a shorter screwdriver. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Loosen that off. Oh look, this is threaded. Is it on tight? No, nope. it is finger tight. There we are. You can see it normally just slots in here. Do you have a threaded piece on the end? I guess it's just for redundancy. On my Argo, I actually had this slip out before, so it makes sense on why they went threaded. Okay, guys, so that's out. Your throttle just slides out of place, as you can see right there. So now I'm just gonna take this linkage off, which I believe is the 11 mil. Yeah, that's the 11 mil. Yours could be different. Sometimes these older machines, people put random like nuts and bolts back on. This one is 11 mil. As fast as that, your linkage is off. So other than that, now I just have to let go the fuel line. 
I'm going to use my needle nose. Squeeze. Just slide it off. There it is. Now, can I poke this off? I notice as well, this top line has a crack in it, so it's definitely going to need to be replaced. There we are. Fuel line off. Now, these, if I recall, are a half inch. All right, now I'm back right here. I'm literally going to twist and pull out the choke cable. Just twist it, pull out the choke cable. Should be a little bit tricky. There we are, got it. All right, guys, I'm trying to block your view, but let's go ahead now and pop this bag girl out of place. She should come. Oh, I'm not going to lose my gasket. Here we are. I'm going to tip it over. But as you can see, we have our linkages on the other side. That is your choke cable. And now we have our carburetor off. Pretty simple. So as you can see, there's really not much to these uh, machines. Here's your main throttle. Your machine most likely literally only has the one throttle. This one, it just has a secondary aftermarket one. You probably definitely don't have that one. If you do, let me know. That would be cool to find out. <laughs> but uh, here's the fuel. Fuel line comes up, feed your carburetor. There's your fuel pump right there. Here's your choke. My little return spring, don't want to lose that. Other than that, you can see there's literally nothing here. <laughs> hey guys, so we're actually into the next morning now. It's actually half chilly out. I didn't do a whole lot yesterday after. Um, so this is the factory carb that was on that Argo. Uh, we're going to inspect it and take off the bowl, which is just on the bottom here, and have a look and see what it looks like. I have a feeling that there's something wrong with this car, but it could be an adjustment, so we'll look at that. And the other one, I just took this off the Argo that I have parked out by the door with a blown engine. So I'm probably going to run this one. I think this is a new one, as you can see. So let's go ahead now, put you guys on the stand, and we'll have a poke at this. Okay, guys, so there's not much to these carburetors. Before I take this one apart, to show you a quick rundown. Um, right here is your main fuel needle adjustment. This one is your idle fuel needle. And um, that one right here, you see that little tiny screw? That's actually your idle. So if we're looking at it right here, if I pull this lever one way or another, see that little screw sticking out? That controls your idle because it's how far back the flap opens. So if we look on this way, you'll see how dirty this carb is now. This is the flap that when you open your throttle, it goes up like that. You open your throttle, that's full throttle. You're letting the full air flow and fuel through. Uh, in the background there, you see there's another flap. It might be hard to see on camera, but uh, that's actually the choke back there. See the choke back there? Let's see if it's that, the like, uh, brassy color. Oh, that's your choke back there. So there's not much to these. Um, let me just pull up the actual adjustments again. So in case you're wondering about the carb adjustments itself, I have them wrote down here on my phone. So the main fuel needle, which is this one right here, if you're sending it, you have to turn it all the way in and you back it out two and a half turns. The oil, idle fuel needle right here, all the way, you screw it all the way in, you back it out one turn. That's this one by my thumb. So that's all it is really for main adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna take off this bowl. Um, with the two separate carbs, they actually have different sizes. I think this one's like a 14 mil, and that one is a half inch. So we'll just compare them as well and see what's going on with them. This one you can see is definitely a bit dirty. This one's corroded. I might have to put that in my carb soaking machine. The, I think it's ultrasonic, if I recall. So we have a little little washer, a little screw. Definitely gonna be full of fuel, but I don't mind. I have a dirty garage. <laughs> there it is. It's not too dirty. You can see your float. I don't know if that's the factory pin, because it looks kind of skewed. This is where your main fuel should go, and there's gonna be a float shut off there. Uh, let's check this one here now. I wonder how dirty this one is. This Argo is the one with the blown engine that had this one. And it was parked outside for the last year or two. 
think the person tried to replace the carb, not realizing the engine was gone. Okay, yeah, look how dirty that is. Yee. That's a very dirty carb. Oh, you can see the fuel, see the old gunky green fuel? That is pretty gross. Uh, that needle's in there pretty good though. Okay guys, so with this one here, I'm gonna pop out the needle. It's not very tight on this one. Lay that down, keep all the parts over here and separate. And now that the needle is out, I'm literally just gonna lift this up. You can see the little float down there. Not sure if you can see it right on that angle. You see the float? Lay that down. And you can see we have a needle right here. So I need a little flat top. This might be too big. Let's try it. Okay, I'm gonna assume this is almost like a jet. Different style curb. Take out these as well. Okay, guys, so we got the red one stripped down pretty quick. I got that with that little screw right there. Um, I'm leaving the idle one in. It's pretty bare bones. I'm pretty confident I can blow this out after soaking it in carb cleaner so let's see if we can get this one apart here now so we got our main screw who knows what that is for the settings just turn it all the way in just to say or just to see where it's to and take that back out that was not in there very far at all Oh, cool. And let's take out this one as well. That's all the way in. Take that back out. There's your little needles. Oh, this one actually is a little bit different. See that? This one actually has like a jet there. The other one looks like a, a different style. Should be able to get this out. Should I like this style of carb more, but it's in definitely um, dirtier condition. Yeah. So as you can see, the carbs are a little bit different, eh? Um, they're not too much different, but I like this style more. It reminds me of my three wheelers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. It's a little bit tighter. This is an automated or automatic punch. So you just push it against uh, the pin and it should eventually come out. See how easy that is? If you don't have one of those, I find a skinny screwdriver and a little few light taps with a hammer. Sometimes that's all you need. Now, can I get that out? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> be careful if you're using one of those. As you can see, that pin kind of flies, eh? All right. Here's your little float right here. Wow, this is a dirty old carb. Yeah, I think I'm going to actually boot up my ultrasonic cleaner for this guy. Because I want to use this carb. But as you can see, it's extremely dirty. Uh, another thing when you're cleaning carbs as well, like you see any like this rubber material, it like almost like a rubber at the bottom of that needle, that rubber there as well, put that aside and try not to get that um, coated in degreaser or what I mean is carb cleaner because it will actually dissolve it and you don't want that. This stuff here, that can even happen with that. Kind of cool. So I haven't actually cleaned uh, one of these carbs before, so I'm just noticing you see the gasket here. It looks like this should be separated. 
I don't want to put that in my uh, ultrasonic cleaner because it looks like a material and I don't want to destroy it. You don't actually need to take this off to clean the car sufficiently, but I want to submerge this in my uh, cleaner. So since that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and just take this off. I'm kind of just doing this curb and going as I've, as I've learned type of situation. So, all right, so that's our linkage there. So at least that part's pretty clean. <laughs> Not much to it. All right here, what do we got going on? So if that's the top, she should disconnect. It should pop up out of place. A little lock and turn that off. This is your main curb part. It's pretty easy as you can see. All right, let us start spraying it down. Okay guys, so I got curb number one is here in the ultrasonic cleaner. I got some cheap pine saw, so I'm just gonna fill it up now to the fill point. You can see it says maximum on the back and let this whirl for a while. So this is what it looks like originally. So I'm gonna fill it up here now and we'll turn around, see what happens. So I took uh, two bottles of pine saw and I'm gonna run this for a bunch of cycles. Okay guys, so I just ran this through um, ultrasonic cleaner a couple times. It's not perfect, but it's certainly better than what it was. So I'm gonna rinse it off with a little carb cleaner, dry it off. Oh, look at that, it even changed colors and uh, reassemble here now. So give me one moment, I'm gonna dry everything off and uh, just rinse it off a carb cleaner, get some of that pine sole off. I also got the other carb into uh, the cleaner here. So I've got to turn that on now shortly. But yeah, let's go ahead now. I'm gonna stick this one together and then I'll stick the other one together. They're basically the same as you guys seen them come apart. Hey guys, let's stick it back together here now. Alrighty, hopefully this is a decent angle. Seems to be, all right now. I lost my screwdriver as fast as best. <laughs> okay, here it is. Perfect. I am slowly losing it. <laughs> All right, so this is our main jet. I'm going to throw that back down. Screw this together. It just screws all the way down. Okay, I got my needle. Little needle valve. Little uh, holder. All right. Just slots on just like that. Now I can put that down in place and put the pin through. Now here's the pin. Put the pin through. See if I can push with a screwdriver. No, no, alrighty. Make sure I got that lined up. Okay, that went a bit too far. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a few little taps. Okay, there we are. So we got our float back on, we got the jet down in our, let's see what else we got to put on. All right, that is <laughs> almost it. <laughs> Amazing how easy, eh? So we have this main screw adjustment. It goes straight down through the top. I'm gonna screw them all the way in and then I'm gonna recheck my uh, specs on the manual, see what they're supposed to be. <clears throat> That is the main one. Almost all the way in. A little bit more. Okay, that's bottom there. Let's bottom out the other one. Which is right here. These are basically just your needle adjustments. Okay, that one's bottomed already. So, we're almost there anyways. Um, I gotta go check the manual real quick. Bear with me. Okay guys, so as you can see on the manual here, it says 
turn the main fuel out from counterclock from lightly bottom so the main fuel one is the one at the top there so we're going to turn that one out two and a half turns and the other one idle fuel needle that one on the side that's going to go out one full turn <clears throat> okay guys so as we've seen on the manual it is two and a half turns out so let's try it there now this is facing this way so this is half turn one full turn half turn two full turns half turn so it's half okay and then this one it says from slightly bottom so it's both there or go back full turn half turn full turn that should be set up for now based on that. So I'm just putting on the, the bowl here now. You just put the gasket in place. Don't forget this has a little washer right here. And then I'm going to snug that up. And then it's just the three screws for that housing down there. If you never took those off, you don't need to worry about that. I think these carps are pretty cheap uh, aftermarket as well. So that's always a bonus. Now, is this one the half inch? No, she's the 14. Nice and snug. You don't want that overly tight, but you don't want it too loose, because if it's too loose, it'll leak. Okay, guys, so as fast as that, we got uh, this basically back together. There's your little linkage. Um, this end right here just goes back down that little hole right here on this one. So I'm going to throw this on the Argo now, and we're going to test this out, <laughs> see if she runs. Um, I, don't ha I don't have any doubts with it. So let's throw it on anyways. So that's it boys, looks like uh, we got her done anyways, uh, the car, she's running way better and she's starting right away every time now. Before it was taking forever to start and it was being really difficult. So I got to put some springs on, return springs, I got to set the idle, that way she holds her idle. I got to get all this done properly and because right now everything's kind of vibrating so like the throttle just vibrating a little bit open, a little bit closed. So that's why she's a little bit lumpy there. But if I had the springs on her, she will hold steady. So as I was saying, I'm going to um, put the shroud back on, uh, put the air filter on, and all that stuff a little bit after. Because I kind of need to mess around here now with the electrical. Uh, as you can see, it's a nightmare. So I'm going to have this all tidy looking, and we'll deal with that. But yeah, guys, that's basically how to clean the carb. Nothing to it at all. Take your time and just uh, get used to it. It's pretty simple. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this small video anyways. And time to crack on now and get the next project done.